Hello and welcome to Talk HR, powered by Alexander Lloyd. I'm Simon Gear, and when I'm not doing this, I am helping MDs, CEOs, and HR directors find the best HR talent in the southeast of the UK. Now, today I just wanted to introduce you to uh, Michael Easton, and these are extracts from a conversation we had, really focusing around how a business engages with its staff after an event like the global pandemic and, and how the leadership there re-engages and makes a connection with its employees. Now, Michael's got some great experience from a global HR perspective. He's worked in large oil and gas organizations, large international engineering organizations. I came to know him best when he worked at Electa, which was a, a large global medical tech business. And um, it was really interesting to hear his, his insights into what organizations need to do next. Hope you enjoy. So thanks for joining us, Michael. It's good Bye. to talk to you. And we've agreed to talk around a, a few areas today, uh, starting really with moving forward, what will be the, the differentiators, do you think, for organizations at this time? Yeah, I think the world has changed in terms of the expectation between the old hierarchical traditional mindset of employee employer discussions and i think that personable conversation that takes place between um the personal needs of the individuals can become much more prevalent the manager being more open to learning more about the individual and the individual employee being able to ask what's more important for them in their definition of the employment relationship because mm. the time that's been spent at home has refocused individuals on what matters and what's important in some cases. And in some other cases, it's about redefining what they want from an employer relationship. In all cases, coming out of the other side of this will be the expectation about how we can manage our workforce in a different way to ensure we drive better performance and to, to ensure that we have a more personable discussion as an employer. So there's some great examples that's been happening uh, recently that Bernard Looney of um, BP has been much more pressable in his conversation and communications from day one mm. about how he's feeling about the situation, about demonstrating his own values, about being able to empathise with what his workforce is going through. Um, and to just share a little bit about yourself. Yeah. Compared to the old hierarchy, well, these people are up there and everybody else is across the organisation. Um, and I think that lends itself to a much more authentic, emotionally led leadership style mm. that is going to be demanded more and more. Well, definitely. And I, I think when you make a good point there, it's lead, leaders are going to have to change how they, how they behave, aren't they? There needs to be a real step back moment and now, uh, you know, gain understanding of what, employees want and expect from from their managers on a daily basis and i, I think that this uh, this change in society that we've had now is is, is really going to throw that wide open mm. i mean how, how do you think leaders can re-establish you know that connection with their staff how, how will organizations re-establish that connection post covid i think it's on the three principles of you ask we listen we're doing together and being able to free up time and space for more flexibility in the employment relationship by more flexibility in hours or place and space of work is going to become more important. Of course, there's going to be the regulations to deal with with uh, distancing and space, mm -hmm. but I think the collaboration and the time spent in offices or facilities together will be used more creatively than what it has been in the past. So people turning up to do work on the desk and going home every day and not really talking to very many other people um, where that work can be done at home will be done at home. Mm. But this, the opportunity for people to collaborate and get together and, and have those spark ideas will still be needed. You know? yeah. So the pressure from employees and communities demanding leadership teams are delivering a rounded, engaging, and collaborative workforce, and assume that policies reflect the communities in which they operate. Mm. 
are consistently applied will become the only thing to do. Definitely. It's not going to be a choice because our employees and communities will demand that organisations operate reflecting those communities in which we operate as individual humans. Oh, you're right. We, we hear that word authenticity a lot more now. I know it's, it's become, you know, a bit of a, of a throwaway, but I think that that seems to be what people want in their leadership now, isn't it? That, that authentic moment of someone who can connect, who listens, who gives these people the best possible opportunity mm-hmm. for them to deliver what they need to deliver. And, and I mean, you're a good man to ask about this. You've worked in some really, you know, large global organizations. For, for, the, for the businesses that are coming back from this and need to, need to make that connection with organizations, how do, you, how do they go about it? I mean, because obviously town halls are probably less of a thing currently. What, what, what suggestions would you have for businesses that are thinking about reconnecting? Um, that's a good question. I think every organization will have its own style. Hmm. So it should be led from a leader and a leadership team have decided on how they want to operate as a business in the sense of purpose um, and that collaboration of taking people's inputs and their demands of them as an employer and creating something that makes it compelling. One, to be attracted to join that company or organization, but secondly, to actually stay. So it's not just about what you say, it's also what you do. Mm promotion opportunities, opportunities for development, investment in uh, the systems and processes to make people's work better, Um, easing uh, the difficulties of operating in the organisation which are known from a global infrastructure or disparate groups or geographic spread that makes things a bit more difficult to collaborate across international boundaries. All of that means that you need to work smarter and harder to make sure that the messaging that you tell to your stakeholders externally also aligns with your internal messaging. Mm. So you've talked about town halls. Yeah, it's a great example, but often that's seen as a top-down tell-sell type of conversation. So the opportunity to, to get smaller groups together, and what I've done in other businesses has been um, finding a way to have smaller groups in coffee discussions, with a little bit of an agenda, um, mm. with one question, um, would you refer us as a good employer? If not, why not? That often starts a conversation. Yeah. And the reason why you want to start a conversation is because the more conversations that you can have in that type of format, you start getting themes that comes out from those discussions. Those themes can then drive into uh, a leadership team view of the themes that's coming out from those discussions which can be facilitated um, by operational teams. But you get to the point of what we're going to prioritise from the themes that's coming out of those conversations. And then you can start going back through the formality of uh, team briefs and town halls and um, smaller communication activities into you ask, we listen, we're doing. And the more you demonstrate some things that you can do quickly, from the feedback, demonstrates that, well, you were listening mm. as an organization and we are doing. And therefore, you can start building momentum of uh, trust. Yeah. It's so important from an employer perspective, an employee relationship, but equally how we want to operate as human beings in an organization that if something's flagged that needs to be done and is able to be done, then make steps to do it. Mm. And be honest about it if it's going to be difficult or it's going to take longer than you expect to do but that honesty transparency authenticity humility mm. are the characteristics of leadership that are needed and will continue to be needed long after this covid crisis definitely definitely and this is and as you say this is will will be the mission for for the smt and and the exco and nhr when this is this is going to be their plan really for the, the second half of 2020 and onwards is, is a real focus on these key areas. Yeah, and it, it's about the organisation taking the time to create connections mm. and make space for people to have those connections. 
The reason why we operate as human beings and collaborate together is because we enjoy spending time with each other and understanding what makes people tick. Mm. And for, sometimes you find people that you have more affiliation to, uh, that you get on well with in an organization. And some of that is in a formal setting and some of that often is more informal. Mm. But to create space for that connectivity, it's really important to drive performance. It's not just about the formality of team building sessions. It's not about people sitting in meetings. Most people get information about what's going on in the organization informally. But if you can use those informal channels and help those informal channels to have information, to be able to work better together, you can then get more consistency. Um, I think working for homes from home is here to stay. Yeah. And I think it's changed, as I've said, going back to my first point where we started this conversation. That the ability to be flexible, to regroup, rethink, and redeploy is going to become the differentiator. Mm. Um, the regrouping of has already happened really from the last three or four months. Um, the rethinking of new practices, new approaches, new engagement tools, new thinking around um, how you develop your workforce to change for the future. Um, the impact on the organization and the resilience coming through where we've come from mm. and to can keep going with the new ways in which are being implemented mm. will also be the differentiator. And of course, Around all of that is to continue engaging and to re-engage and to reassess what's important for people or teams in the organization and make sure that you can have an organization that people want to be part of. Definitely, definitely. And I have to admit, in, uh, you make a really good point there and, and thank you for um, finishing up with that. But, but we, I'm already seeing it with the people I'm talking to that are in the market at the moment. They the questions are around culture and attitude and, and leadership far more than the role content and the, and the locations and things like that. So it's, it, it's already being driven from both sides, I think, mm. of, of employer and potential employee going forward. There's a, mm. there's a logic to it going forward that I think people just don't want to ignore. You know, they've, um, we've all been through a version of change uh, depending on our own lockdown uh, circumstances, but Every, everyone is looking to continue the perhaps incidental improvements that have started happening and 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 put a stop to the things that were perhaps stifling creativity um creating barriers between leaders and, and employees so um you raise some really great points michael thank mm. you no I, th I think it's an important conversation actually when you're considering um what's important for individuals to come out of this in the right way is job seekers or um, from an employer's conversations with potential candidates. It is about resilience. It is about thinking about that transformation, change expectations. What have people learned through this? And what can we continue to learn to improve from the experiences that we've all had? And how do we make sure that what's important to you can be communicated well during the process of your selection of considering what your next employer is going to look like. Because some of those values that you will have as a candidate, you would ideally want to have shared by the employer that you're considering you want to be applying for or to be working for. That doesn't always happen. I think there's more of an obligation to ask those questions that might be a bit difficult to be answered, but it gives you clarity about what you want out of your work life, as well as your employer, as well as your career going forward. Completely. No, I, I couldn't agree more. Hey, thanks so much for joining me today. Great. I really appreciate you uh, making a bit of time in your schedule. And um, thank you. Obviously, you and I will keep in touch, and hopefully, people will find this uh, this conversation, you know, interesting. And uh, we look forward to trying to generate some feedback. But thanks Great a lot. Stuff. I've enjoyed the conversation. Thank you. Cheers. Bye.